Yeah. Yo, what is going on, guys? It is Boy Soldier here back again with a brand new video. Today, we're going to be interviewing Luca Nets, the whale, one of the biggest entrepreneurship, you know, guys on the internet right now. Luca, if you want to say what's up. What's up, boys? How you guys doing? <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, so we got a lot of awesome questions from our Discord group, you know, asking them all the things about life, entrepreneurship, mindset. So, uh, you know, I, I value your time. I don't want to waste it here. So other than that, let's, let's get right ahead and on into it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so our first question coming from the Discord is, uh, again, guys, if you want to be a part of the, you know, part of the talk, both of our Discords will be down below. But other than that, let's get into it. So Spicy Senorita asks, Luca, how do you deal with doubting yourself? I think it's like the hardest part of all of this, right? Because like, it's interesting in how like, how you speak to yourself, the language in which you speak to yourself is like so important. And like, when you're feeling really good, you feel on top of the world, you feel like you can do anything. And then like, unfortunately you'll wake up and just be a human and you'll not feel good. And you feel, you'll doubt yourself completely. I think it's just like, this is where like, I think like having confidence and having an ego really like can be beneficial. Like at the end of the day, like if I believe I can conceive and like really understand what that means and you know, understanding that it's like all mental and that like this physical reality that we're in is nothing but a game. Like we're GTA characters playing a game and like your mind is the puppet master behind it all. So like knowing that like the mental is 90% of it and that everything else is 10%, just like staying true and just keep giving yourself positive affirmations and just believing in yourself. And I think, you know, eventually just kind of build this like innate muscle memory style confidence where it's like dude even when I feel bad it's like bro I'm still I'm still capable like no matter what and so it's definitely a struggle I think mental health is something that I've dealt with like so much in my life and I think it's just something that like dude you you have to just believe and like if you don't believe that you can succeed you will never succeed you know so it starts with believing as corny as it sounds but it's really the the base foundation for what it takes to be successful and what it is to achieve your dreams. Absolutely. That's amazing answer. Loved it. Uh, this one comes from uh, Chapo. I believe he's in your discord as well. Uh, should, should you attack multiple industries or stick to one business model? And then, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of takes on that interested in hearing yours. So what do you have to say? Yeah, about it's it? a great question. And I've seen a lot of the young entrepreneurs in the short term, make the most money by adapting and being fluid, right? Like I'll give you guys an example. I do e-commerce, right? That's like my bread and butter. But when NFTs came around, right? Like I'd never started a, like, you know, I had my agency, like, you know, marketing like certain brands and I could have continued doing like e-com and like running stores and doing what I was doing instead. Like when this huge gold rush happened with NFTs, I was like, yo, like, let me do like, I basically bought like a million dollars worth of Instagram posts, bottled the market. And like, if you wanted to market on like X amount of pages, I'd charge, you know, a one to one and a half to two to three X premium, you know, just basically creating that bottleneck in a couple months, I made 2 million bucks. Right. And so when you look at it like that, it's like, dude, I would have never done that if I wasn't fluid and adapted to my environment, right? If I was just stuck on what I was doing, that's 2 million bucks in three months that I wouldn't have made. And so there is a catch 22, because if you're too much of an opportunist, then you'll never be able to, you know, pursue what really is going to make you wealthy, which is like some sort of exit or some sort of, you know, big, you know, endeavor or brand that you create. And so it's really based on personality styles and understanding and being living in reality and understanding like, look, like it, does what you're doing have upside, right? Like I, I've been able to be fluid for a long time because I always realized that nothing that I was doing was a equity style business. I've been up until maybe six months ago, I was a very cash flow style entrepreneur. Like I was never building brand equity. I was just making cash. Right. So when you're, you know, when I'm real with myself and understanding that like none, nothing that I'm doing has real intrinsic value, then I can be fluid in how I move because it's like, it's all about cash flow, Right. So like I can go stop this drop shipping store that's making me 200 grand a month and go pursue, you know, you know, NFT marketing agency style models. Right. Because like, I'm fluid and that's going to make me more cash flow. I'm not building something. Now I've obviously transitioned with stuff like gel blaster 
where I'm like now building brand equity and that's like way more fulfilling and way more awesome. So it's just kind of understanding where you are in your life. If you're just a, you know, I kind of refer to myself as a professional money flipper, like for years, I'm just like, that's all I've been dude. Like just fucking money flipping in whatever capacity I could. And I think just being real with yourself and understanding what you're doing. Like if you consider yourself a money flipper and somebody who cares about monthly cash flow versus building brand equity, then like being fluid and adapting and understanding trends and catching trends is important. But if you have, like, if you're building a brand and you're gaining traction and you're gaining hundreds of followers a day, and like you really see an incline in brand equity, then you would be irresponsible to stop doing that and go chase, you know, short-term cash. So I think it's really dependent on like who you are as an entrepreneur and what your situation is at that current time. Beautiful. And, you know, just <clears throat> relating overall, uh, you know, throughout your day, I mean, you're going through so much, man. How do you, HHH Dolphin asks, how do you stay motivated and disciplined throughout your day? You know, going through all that. Yeah, I think that's good. So like most of my career, my sphere of influence was never a good one, but like I always had people that needed my help. But now I hang around guys like, dude, yesterday I met a guy who like is clearing 15, $20 million a year profit. And he's like only a couple of years older than me. Like I'm around, like I'm in Austin, Texas in the robotic center in Austin, Texas and the most beautiful office probably in Austin. And I'm like hanging around a bunch of top level entrepreneurs, all guys that have sold businesses for a hundred, 200, 500 billion dollars. And I'm like, you know, I've never been more motivated, right? Yeah. So it's like, dude, you're around people who are getting to it and like doing shit, you'll be motivated. You're around a bunch of people who need your help. You're not going to be motivated. Cause it's like when everyone's asking for your help, your ego is like artificially inflated. You're like, oh yeah, they need my help. Like I'm the guy, I'm the boss. I'm the one who made it. And it's like, dude, it's a false reality. Cause it's like, you could make a million bucks in a year, but like, dude, there's guys like, dude, I, three days ago, I went to a party that cost 2 million bucks. You know what I mean? Like, dude, there's, there's levels to this shit. So just understanding like, what level do you want to be on? Like, do you want to be a family man and like be conservative, which everything that's awesome. But like, you know, certain people have certain goals and certain objectives in life. And mine is to be a fucking, you know, financially free for many generations to come. Not only my kids or their kids or their kids, but just, you know, 10 generations of nets. And so it's like, you know, if that's my goal, if that's my objective, then like, I can't be short-sighted and like, think that like making a million bucks or 2 million bucks or 3 million bucks a year, like that's like, you know, a huge accomplishment. Cause like I walk around bro. And like, you're around like the right people, the right environments, like it'll motivate you. And I think that's a lot of people will then say like, well, Luca, how do I get in the right environments? How do I get in these rooms by providing value? Like, why am I in this gel blaster office? Cause I provide fucking immense value. You know, like why I'm in with all these top entrepreneurs because I provide immense value. These guys can't do what I do. Right. And I've right. spent years mastering that craft. It's not going to happen overnight. You're going to have to dig deep and, you know, find comfort in being alone. And like when you find that comfort of being alone and you grind and you put your hours in, you put your years in, like you will be in situations like I'm in and like other people are in. And so I think it's really just a matter of just like, you know, one thing that it's like, if, if you're not around, if you can't be in a dope sphere of influence, be alone. Like people just like have a hard time being alone. And like, you're, you're, you're going to be, a, you're going to live a rough life if you can't find, you know, comfort in being by yourself. Like if I had the choice to be by myself or hang out with a bunch of losers, I would fucking, you know, excuse my language. I'd be by myself, you know? And so it's like, okay, you can't find that sphere. Well, lock in, be by yourself, do what you need to do until you can provide value to people who can put you in those rooms and you can get comfortable there. And that's really, I think how it works. Sweet. Yeah. hundred percent. You know, I think we share the same mindset on that. I love making myself uncomfortable and always, you know, striving for more, striving for better and checking out what else is out there. But, uh, you know, this question is kind of off the grid, but you know, this tells a lot about a person. Um, this one is, uh, how do you pick out what women you date? That's a good one. And it's one I haven't really mastered. And I think that comes, you know, in a multitude of different ways, but like, dude, your partner has to like, relationships have to be like mutually beneficial, right? Like a lot of relationships tend to be one-sided and like, you know, like, dude, at the end of the day, like, the wrong partner can be what we call an energy vampire. And anybody who is on the trajectory to like success, 
like cannot have an energy vampire bring them down. I can't tell you how many people that I know that are literally born to be tycoons and bosses that because they have a certain partner, they've completely fallen short and their lives are pretty much not ruined, but for the time being at a complete stalemate because they prioritized a partner over what was in their best interest. And I think this kind of comes back to like living in reality, like live in reality at all times. And I tell, you know, my, my kids and my, my group, like all the time, I'm like, dude, like live in reality. Some people live in reality. Some people live in fantasy land. And like, it's like when a girl cheats on you, right. And like, you've cheated on her a hundred times, but like you lose it. You're like, you cheated on me. It's like, dude, you're living in fantasy land. You cheated on her a hundred times. So like, why are you so upset? You know, it's like not understanding what's really going on. And like reality, a lot of people just don't really know what's going on, like around them and with their spouse. And I just really encourage everybody to like, look at your sphere of influence. Like I mentioned before, like, you know, it goes your family, it goes your partner, and then it goes your friends. Like if your partner is not motivating you, not pushing you, not inspiring you, not like, you know, teaching you things, not, you know, sharing the same goals and aspirations, you are literally setting yourself 10 steps backwards. And so with that, like, it's the most important thing and, and how you find it, like, you know, love comes when love comes and you got to pick that person, you know, correctly, but just make sure that like, you know, any relationship, whether it's a, you know, uh, intimate relationship or a business relationship or a friendship, like it has to be mutually beneficial. Like there's a lot of energy vampires in this world. So don't let people bring you down no matter who it is and make sure that those relationships are always mutually beneficial. Never get into a relationship, no matter what type of relationship that is, that isn't mutually beneficial for both parties. And that's kind of my advice. Amazing. It's a beautiful answer, man. I really appreciate that. Definitely will take it into account my personal endeavors. And, uh, you know, this question, uh, I, I'm sure a lot of people, <clears throat> you know, being entrepreneurs, face problems, challenges, and e empire asks, what if I got zero bread left? You know, if you have zero bread left, that's an interesting one. It's just like, dude, got to dig deep, start saving. A lot of people have really poor money management skills. So it's like, why do you have zero bread? Do you have zero bread because you spent it, you know, trying to grow your business or, you know, spent it on a girl or spent it having fun? First, identify why you have zero bread left. If it's, you know, because you were trying to build a business, get a job, start saving, run it back, right? Like most people, when they run out of, you know, money, when they're starting a business, they just quit, right? Like, dude, there's an analogy. I say the 10 grand uh, when I was younger, I was like 17 and it was going to be like my startup money and it was all in cash. And then one day I won't get into the details because the story is like 10 minutes long, but basically I lost all the cash, Right. I literally spent a whole year working for this 10 grand and immediately in one, one day, one hour, all that money was gone. I basically got stolen or I like got pickpocketed. It's a long story. I'm not going to get into it. I was devastated, dude. And I was like an all time low. I woke up the next morning and I went to work. And for the lat, lat, and, and the six months at that, that post that moment, Dude, I was, I was working a job. I was working overtime every day. It was at a startup and the company was growing. So I was able to work overtime. I worked literally 10, 11 hours every single day, two, three hours extra. And I saved. And in six months, I had all that money back. And then I started right back at again, right? And so if you're losing it in the business, keep working. Like, dude, when, you know, most people just quit after that. And that's why, you know, there's only so many millionaires and everybody else is pretty much average or middle class or in poverty. And then, you know, if it's, if it's other things like being a poor money manager, right, spending your money on girls or trips that you don't deserve or all these type of things, then like, you know, that's a whole other issue, which I just really encourage everybody to like learn how to manage your money. Because like, that's like the biggest thing I see people like screwing up on. Like, you know what I never got? Like, I never got how you can make $15 an hour and spend $20 on lunch. And like, people are like, what do you mean? I'm like, dude, what do you mean what I mean? Like, you're making... 15 bucks an hour and you're going to spend $20 of it on lunch after taxes. That means two hours of all of your workday of your eight hour workday goes to your lunch. Like that made no sense to me. 
when I was making 15 bucks an hour, my budget for breakfast and lunch was five bucks, dude. Like that was my budget. Like that's proper money management. People will be like, well, that's cruel. That's like, no, dude, that's smart. That's called being like efficient and effective. You know, like that's, you're making 15 bucks an hour. Like, dude, you, you haven't earned $20 lunches. And I know it might sound cruel or whatever, but like at the end of the day, like business is cruel. Like it's a hard world. So it's just like understanding that perspective and, and, and knowing what that means. And you guys can take that how you, how you like. No, absolutely. Money management's everything. I mean, I saw a guy from high school, you know, work at a car dealership and buy a Ferrari and <laughs> it's crazy. You definitely got to be on top of it. Use your money in smart ways in your business, everything like that. But, uh, you know, this question comes from a mill. Uh, how do you transition a winning dropshipping store into a long-term brand that you can later sell? I think it's just like, I mean, at that point, it's just brand building. It doesn't matter if it's drop shipping or not. Like, how do you build a brand, right? Like, get inventory, get branding, get packaging, provide an amazing customer experience, which is like the hardest part. Make sure your customer is happy by any means necessary. And, and then you don't need to be a drop shipper to transition or that's just like brand building in general. Like, what I've noticed, because I've just gotten into the whole brand building world. It's just like customer experience, dude. Like, do people like your product and do they like your experience? If like, you know, your shipping times, your customer service, like if you don't have that, it's just a means to an end, you know, like yeah. without that, like you'll never truly, truly, truly scale. And so I think it's just like the difference between a drop shipping, you know, company and a brand is customer experience. It's the only difference. They both do the same thing. Give product to consumer. They're both in the same category, D to C right? The only difference is, is one has a good customer experience, fast shipping times, good branding, good quality, extra effort on the back end, And the other has no effort. One is just run ads, you know, or burlo and, and nothing. So it's like, you can't expect, you know what I mean? Like that's really the only difference between a brand and a drop shipping store. One has exponentially more, a better customer experience versus the other one doesn't. Yeah. And that de definitely, yeah. <clears throat> and one, one little tip I could, I could say there, you know, um, for people who are struggling with customer experience and what I've done with my stores is I've moved fully into digital products and, you know, just commerce in general and not just always, you know, running and jumping on these impulse products and selling what everyone else is. So um, for people who are struggling with customer experience, that's it's instant gratification. And you're doing you like digital products. Are you saying like rebuilds, like stuff like that? Uh, no, more so like, uh, like meditation, kind of like, I, I want to get an app going right now. So like some sort of stuff. That. Yeah. So working on that Calm was a no brainer, dude. That calm. was calm. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's goals, man. So yeah. that's what I, you know, the whole goal well, is. Yeah, what I, do that. I would love to, I would love to invest or do something on that. Yeah, so absolutely. I like that. Yeah. I can give you the whole rundown afterwards, but uh, this one comes from Flophead. So I know Luca has a lot of projects going on in e-com crypto and more. My question is how do you, how does he divide up his focus and choose what to work on and when? Some say you should focus on one thing and be best at it. Luca has obviously gone around that and succeeded in several areas. I'm curious about the time management and delegation that requires. Also, how has his mindset changed throughout his business career? Yeah, so it's really like team is important. Like I never own 100% of anything. Like I'm always between a 10 and 50% owner in things. And my focus is really prioritized by what's making the most money, right? Like- and, you know, one thing that's unique, you know, a lot of people in my situation kind of do the same thing, but like, dude, I've lost millions of dollars figuring out a lot of things. So if I come into your business and I take 20%, right, I will save you so much time, energy and losses that like me doing nothing but pointing you in the right direction, connecting you with people, you know, you know, getting on daily calls or weekly calls is like enough to provide value for what I'm taking, right? Like it, it helps exponentially. Like many times now have I taken 10 to 20% of somebody's business and like really not put in much like muscle work, but a lot of brain work and like they're exponentially scaling. So it's like a lot of people think that like, dude, I'm like setting everything up. Like, no, no, like I do none of that. You know, I always partner and integrate myself with people who, you know, do like the muscle and like I always like to be like kind of the brain kind of right like I'm not like in the business of 
like putting in 12 hours. Like I'm in the business of working smarter, not harder, right? Like I, I, I don't need a hundred percent of the pie. I don't really need 50% of the pie. I, I need whatever I feel like my value is worth for what I'm contributing and it's worked out well. And so when you look at it and you look at everything that I'm a part of, well, it's like, dude, a lot of the stuff, like I do consulting, like my marketing agency, it's just a lot of ad buyers. Like for my marketing agency, I do nothing but like connect people in group chats. And like, I got like five people working under me handling the whole thing, you know, like back to the point on the NFT, you know, bottlenecking the, the Instagram marketplace. Like, dude, I didn't do anything for that. Like I literally had like two guys working under me. Uh, they've been working under me for a couple of years now, but like, just put them in group chats, paid the money and then collected the money when it was time to collect and then on to the next, you know? And so it's just like a really, like, I, 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 I can't outwork anyone. Like I'm not, I, I don't have the patience. I don't have, like, I, I, I burnt out a long time ago. Like I will just outsmart you. And that's like, kind of like my game. And I think it's the game of a lot of people who are in similar positions as I. Just like, dude, work smarter, not harder, you know? Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. So, you know, your time's super valuable. So we're going to transition from the Discord questions. And, you know, I have a few questions I want to ask you. Um, and, you know, what is the goal? What's the vision of Luca Nets? Where are you taking yourself, your brand? Um, what in the next five, 10 years, what's your vision right now? Where are you going for? Yeah, dude. So my main focus is just building brands, right? So, gel blaster just finished a raise at nine figures uh valuing the company at nine figures we raised money there so i think gel blaster is congrats man it's huge dude. so like that was like a huge one for us where it's just like okay like you know this is this actually is like you know pretty close to being a billion dollar company right like a unicorn under the belt which i think is really important uh i, I i've honestly you know, you're in the Netscom Discord. Like I've been slacking there. I've been slacking in other places in terms of like how much time I put in versus what I put in before. But I'm also learning so much so that my value is a lot more exponential than it, than it once was. But it's like, dude, those are like, I've been fiending for like opportunities like this for the last couple of years. Like I've made millions of dollars. Like I have plenty of money to last me a lifetime. You know, I could stop working right now and I would have, if I budgeted correctly, like I'd have enough money to live a really good life until the day I die with like never lift working a finger again. So it's just like, I'm beyond like making cash. Like I want to like build the legacy, dude. And I think Gel Blaster and Pudgy can help do that. And I think I can change a lot of lives in the process. I think I can help a lot of people in the process. I think I can just like make people smile in the process. And it's like, dude, imagine making tons of money, like while like impacting people's lives. And so like, I finally have the two vehicles in which like I can do that with. And now it's just about like putting in the time and putting in the grind to like add fuel to those vehicles to, you know, take them into the moon. And that's really like my two primary focuses. I had like 15 things that I was a part of. I relinquished a lot of equity. Like I'm one of those business partners where it's like, you know, I'll do deals. And if I'm not providing value and I see the other person grinding, like I'm not one of those like evil dictators. It's like, oh no, we had an agreement. I'm, I have my equity, you know, like I gave up a lot of equity to a lot of things I was a part of. Cause it's just like, dude, like I'd be an asshole if I kept this, you know, and just like honing in on the few big ones. Um, just overall entrepreneurship, what's that like universal piece of advice that you could give? It's just don't give up. It sounds so corny, but it's like, dude, I, everyone I see fail just gives up. Like, dude, if I would have gave up the first time I failed or the third time I failed or the fifth time I failed, I would be working a job right now, making 20, 25, 30 bucks an hour. Like, you know, like if I would have given up, like I would have never made it here. And like, dude, I remember crying in the bathroom thinking that I was going to give up. I remember being in my shower with my roommate Pronto at the time, 18, just moved out. I like couldn't pay the bills, like car, just at this old 335i and like BMW is like the fucking coolant always breaks once you hit a certain mile. And like, I just like couldn't pay for this replacement on the coolant. And like, I was just like crying in the shower. I was like, bro, what am I doing? You know? And like, I had like four failed stores in and it's just like, dude, if I could have quit right there, man, like. I could have quit right there and I could have been like, I'm just going to work a job, you know? 
And so like, dude, it's just don't give up. I see everybody, everybody who's not where they want to be, dude, they just gave up at some point. It's as corny as it sounds. It's like, it's just the truth, you know? Yeah. I know. I mean, just, you know, thank you for having me on. I've been hearing yeah. the the soldier through the grapevine. So it's a pleasure to finally be on a call with you. Yeah, absolutely, man. Pleasure to get to know you. Thank you, Jace, for hopping on and helping record this thing. And I just want everyone to like, listen to this, like, dude, believe in yourself. Like if you, if you believe you can conceive, you know, like if you really truly believe in your ability, like anything can happen. And I think like, I'm not the only person to say this. I actually pulling, I'm pulling this quote from the genius Kanye West, Donda West quote, right? Like, dude, if you can, if you can just believe it, like, like that's it, you know? And so I, everybody listening to this is capable of achieving <laughs> anything that they want to, you know, I'm just a fucking, if you would have seen me when I was 15, 16, I was a poor kid, you know, selling joints with holes in my thrasher hoodie, holes in my Dickies cargos and holes in my Huff shoes. You would have never believed I would be here, you know, but that's okay because like people don't need to believe you just need to believe I always believed I'm not shocked I'm here right now. I knew I was going to be rich since I was 12, you know, like I knew it. And like nobody else if you would have seen me before would have believed it. And it's like, dude, everyone is capable. I'm re I really believe that it's just like, do you believe that I believe you guys can be capable, you know, can do anything that you want, but do you and I think that's really the important thing so just believe love people help people don't be a mean person don't be angry if you're angry at somebody forgive them life's too short at any moment any of us can wake up with cancer or you know brain tumor nothing stopping us you know that from happening so just like be grateful for your situation and just believe in yourself and i promise you anything can happen so thank you soldier for giving me a platform to do this interview i really appreciate it i believe in you soldier i believe in you jace and I believe in everyone listening. So thank you. Absolutely. Luca, appreciate it so much. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day, man. Later. Peace.